Head Coach Kelly Sheffield is here. We'll have some opening comments and take questions. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, now we're we're very excited about the opportunity that we have in front of us. You know, to to be uh, still playing and one of 16 teams still playing and and be able to host uh, the regionals. Uh, we're we're super excited about that. Um, we uh, you know we got uh, we found out what times that we were. Uh, we were playing yesterday, and I think we were uh, a little bit bummed for our fans uh, with, with the times that uh, were given to us. Uh, and I know quite a few of them are are a little bit uh, disappointed that they're having to make the choice whether to take a half day off of work or or skip a skip the, what is uh, essentially the most important match of our season. So um, uh, this has been an unbelievable. You know, I think uh, the field house is one of the best places to play in, in the country. And, and we've been so appreciative of the fans and uh, who've been with us every step of the way. I, we, I've been getting emails and tweets and everything else uh, past 24 hours, you know, uh, quite a few of them that are just bummed that they're just not going to be able to, to make it and what can they do with their, their tickets. And so uh, I think it's an incredible gesture to make sure that you know, even if people can't be there, that they're trying to reach out and, and donate their ticket. And uh, they can do that by just uh, reaching out to our ticket office if that's something that uh, you find yourself into. But kind of along with that generosity, we were kind of or kind of that, that thought that, you know, went home last night and was talking with Kathy. And uh, I think you sit there and you're like, the, this is the most important match of the season. And we don't want our players playing in front of a half – Half-empty field house. I mean that um, uh, that would uh, that stink for for those guys. So we're going to try to make it as easy as possible, and hopefully get some of the students and the student athletes here. Uh, Kathy and I are going to uh, the first thousand tickets um, uh, for students or student athletes. We're going to pay for for them so they can get here, and and hopefully we we can get that. Uh, where it's not half empty, where it's actually full and it's louder than it's ever been. So uh, we're hoping the students and the student athletes take us up on that. And, you know, um, you know, their, their pre-weekend activities can begin with a volleyball match uh, in the field house. And um, so we're, we're excited about uh, being able to host and we're excited about the possibilities moving forward. Uh, along those lines, uh, as, as an advocate of your sport, how do you balance the extended TV opportunities versus the hardships that are put on fans when you, the, the whole thing was set up to put these matches in places where the top teams get support? Yeah, it's it's tough. You know, we, we've been, you know, your, your, your sport's at a point where, you know, you're wanting more in TV. You, you're wanting to get on TV more. That's something that um, we've, we have felt has been very important. Um, and I think there's an appreciation of, all right, for the first time, every one of our Sweet 16 matches will be, will be televised. That's cool. Um, you know, I, I think we wanted to have this, um, you know, the reason why we went to um, uh, uh, the top four seeds hosting is so we can get more fans in. The times of the matches, I think that makes it pretty tough. You know, we're playing at 1, Nebraska's playing at, at 11. Um, there's another match later on that day that starts at 10 o'clock Central Time. Uh, that's kind of tough. Uh, you know, from, uh, from our standpoint, uh, you've got to get four practices before our match, which means we'll, we'll, our serving pass that time will be at 7.15 in the morning. Well. Nebraska plays two hours before us, so you can imagine what time their serving pass is. Um, you know, so logistically, that it can be a little bit tough. I think afterwards, I think the powers to be that are going to have to sit around and figure out what is actually best. And, um, you know, everybody has their own agenda and, and own thoughts of, of what is most important. And, and uh, I think we've got some good people overseeing our sport, and they'll make the right decisions. Um, but... You know, I, I don't know if that's the story right now. It's, you ask our players, and uh, they'd be willing to play for an opportunity to go to the regional finals at 3.30 in the morning in front of zero fans. I mean, and they're going to they're gonna bring uh, a competitive uh, 
mentality to that match, no matter where it is, no matter what time it is. It, it, um, it's unfortunate a little bit, but I see, uh, you know, uh, I think we can still pack the place, and um, I think it's still going to be an incredible, incredible match against a really tough opponent that I respect a lot. Uh, regarding your opponent, last week you got a, to see a couple of fresh teams. Now you're back to somebody you've played twice. You've played two or three times almost every year. And you've, you've swept both matches. So do you expect them to change up the dynamics of that sort of uh, rematch? You know, we, we went against them in a very similar situation two years ago in the Sweet 16, and we're fighting for our lives, you know. And, uh, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of maturity with our group that, that knows that you're guaranteed nothing, that you've got to be able to bring. You've got to be able to – the focus has to be very intense on one opponent and one opponent only, and to be able to play your absolute best when your best is required. Um, you know, they're also playing for the exact same thing, which is the opportunity to, to advance forward in – in, a, in the NCAA tournament and a Final Four that is right there in their home city. So I, they're going to be highly motivated as well. Uh, they've changed some things up. They're now running a 6-2, which they haven't earlier in the year when we played against them. I think they look a lot better in a 6-2. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, their, um, their personnel, it, it puts them in, in better situations, I think. Uh, we're also a different team. Uh, you know, going back and watching the film of the previous two team, times we played, we got some people in different positions. Um, but it's, again, it's about uh, that an hour and a half, two and a half hours, can you play as good as you can possibly play against an opponent that's going to be trying to do the exact same thing. Now you're concentrating on the Buckeyes, but on the other side, uh, you got a pretty good Stanford team in Florida State that's uh, made a nice run here too, right? Yeah, I watched, uh, <clears throat> watched Florida State versus Florida, and they're down 0-2 and losing in the third, and you just saw uh, their grit and their tenacity of, and stick to 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 kind of stay with the match and, and just played out and, and got better and better as, as it went through. Um, uh, I thought they uh, – they really impressed me. Uh, Stanford, once they switched, you know, they're kind of a little bit different than what um, than what Ohio State's done. They've gone from a six-two to a five-one, you know, and, and running a one-setter offense. And they've looked quite a bit better once they've done that. I haven't watched a whole lot of, of Stanford. Just watching matches here and there. Got the opportunity of watching them and um, what well, Boise State uh, the other night and. And they're physical. They're the best blocking team in the country. Um, it, um, I haven't dove into either one of those guys yet. It's just been, you know, here, let's put all of our attention right now into Ohio State. Let's, let's re refresh our memories of, about what they're about, and then we'll kind of take care of that when the time gets here. Anything else for Coach? Thanks a lot, guys. All right, thanks, Keller.